This is now the seventh of my weekly messages to the Diocese of Leicester since the lockdown. Uh, it must be becoming a tradition. I guess that means I'm going to have to carry on doing it uh, forever. But uh, that's not really a chore because I'm enjoying having these conversations with different people in the diocese. And today I'm really pleased that I'm joined by Lusa in Sengrungoy, who is our BAME, uh, Mission and Ministry Enabler. That title is a little bit of a mouthful, I'm afraid, and uh, I have to take responsibility for that as well. But it basically means that Lusa is working to encourage uh, black, Asian, minority, ethnic uh, people to uh, engage with the life of the church in Leicestershire and uh, also leading our particular project around intercultural worshipping communities. So Lucia, thank you ever so much for uh, joining me for this conversation today. And uh, first of all, uh, how are you? How, how are you and your family coping in the midst of uh, all that's happening? Well, we, we are well. Uh, it's been an adventure, I must say with many highs and the occasional low. Uh, it's been really good uh, in many ways to watch our children literally grow uh, before our eyes. We've got three young children uh, and I'm indebted to Miriam, my wife, uh, who's taken the, the lion's share of homeschooling. Uh, she might suggest that lion's share is a euphemism. <laughs> but she's, she's been really good uh, at looking after, after the kids and which has given me space uh, and time to then engage in, uh, in hand, endless uh, Zoom meetings. Uh, and uh, yes, it, it's been um, a time where, where I think we've seen ourselves really blessed uh, of, uh, of the place where we are and the context in which we are and, and really supported by, uh, by friends uh, and family near and far. That's good to hear. And I think those of us with slightly older children, uh, I have nothing but admiration for those of you uh, with younger children coping uh, in the midst of uh, all the multiple challenges that, uh, that you face. Um, and Lucy, I'm, I'm very aware that you, you have um, lots of international connections uh, all around the world, really, but particularly uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. You have family in Belgium and the Netherlands. Um, so you must have a good sense of, of how this pandemic is impacting different parts of the world. Um, just tell us a little bit of what you're, you're picking up. So we've got families scattered over three continents. Uh, and so in, in many ways, uh, using uh, virtual space for communication is not a novelty for us. Uh, but what we've noted is, is that probably more than before, we are a lot more intentional in communicating with one another. Uh, and... And because we've got family in different countries, it has been fascinating to see the different approaches and the different responses, uh, but also varying levels of, of anxiety uh, in, in, in people's attitude and, and responses. And, and what I notice is that it seems that in those areas, those countries where there's higher trust in the authorities, people tend to be a lot more compliant. Uh, and where uh, in the States, uh, where there's uh, mixed messages being sent, uh, there's higher level of anxieties as well. And the sense of powerlessness at not being there with them, uh, especially not being with those uh, who are mourning uh, and, and not being able to share in, in the pain of those of our relatives and friends who, who have died. And so that has been um, distressing in some ways. Thank you. That's a fascinating perspective. And I think I've, I've been particularly mindful as well of our partner diocese in, uh, in Tanzania, in India, uh, and also in Wyoming in the States, again, all being affected in, uh, in different ways. And we've been trying to, to hold them in our prayers very much. Um, there have been some quite shocking statistics as well, Lucer, about um, numbers of uh, black, Asian, and minority ethnic people who have died with the virus in, in this country. Um, and I know the governments are, are, are going to launch a, an inquiry and uh, to try and examine some of the reasons behind that. I'm sure they'll be very complex. But I, I've also been struck by the fact that we, we do seem to struggle in, in society in general, but indeed within the church as well, to be able to talk about these sorts of issues and actually have honest conversations about them. Uh, wh why do you think that is? Uh, I think it, it is important that, that the government is looking into this uh, and, and trying to, to find some of the, the reasons why some communities are being uh, more adversely affected. Uh, I think it would have been better for, for the government to look at, at an inquiry, maybe uh, uh, 
that will be looking not just on the impact of COVID, but exploring uh, other uh, societal and systemic issues that are disfavoring specific communities. Uh, and if we look at, at, at the data, we know, for instance, that BME communities are twice as likely uh, to suffer from, from food deprivation, for instance, than the, the general population. Uh, and, and in terms of, um, uh, of, of, of work, we also know that uh, BME communities are more likely to be in those roles that are today considered as, as frontline and more at risk as well, with le less protection. So how can we create um, uh, a, a culture where the data, in some ways, helps us live better lives? Uh, I think that that's a, a real challenge for us as a society. Uh, but I think the data will help us also start asking new questions and, and engaging uh, with realities, lived realities, uh, that many people experience on a daily basis. And it seems to me that our church has often been shy uh, at addressing issues of uh, ethnic diversity. Uh, and, and I think we, we like working on the assumptions that uh, there is a level playing field uh, and that uh, all of us are welcome, present and participating. But actually the reality is a lot bleaker than that. Uh, perhaps this may be an opportunity for us to, to start asking ourselves uh, deeper questions and perhaps also uh, making sure that issues pertaining or affecting BAME communities aren't the, sole, aren't the sole concern of BAME people, but that all of us will feel uh, mutually responsible for what happens to, to each other and the kind of society that we build where all may flourish. Lisa, I'm very conscious uh, with some of these, uh, these big questions about what's going on in society at the moment, that uh, people can either feel uh, powerless and and not know what they can do about any of it uh, or indeed feel feel guilty and um, uh, wish that they could do more um, but I'm just wondering what your thoughts are then in terms of our current situation about what people can be doing and what what you've been encouraging people to do at this time hmm. I'm, I'm struck by the fact that uh, throughout this crisis, we seem to have been divided into three categories, uh, heroes, villains, and bystanders, uh, most of us falling in the bystander category. I'm not sure that this is quite helpful uh, in, in allowing us to inhabit this space uh, uh, positively, uh, because I, I think those categories don't allow us for nuance and, and recognizing the complexity uh, of, of human existence in community and societies that are fractured and, uh, and, and broken. And besides, they, they seem to, uh, to give precedence to, um, uh, to, to productivity and to outcome, uh, and therefore focusing on the doing rather than the being. And I wonder whether there is something from our Christian tradition and perspective that might allow us to, uh, to help ourselves and each other reflect a bit about uh, how can we be uh, in this space, in this time where there is not as much for most of us to do. Uh, but I'm, I'm also uh, taking it from my uh, cultural and, and, and spiritual tradition uh, rooted in the African philosophy of life, uh, which is often referred to as Ubuntu, that speaks of personhood not in uh, individual and isolated terms, but in relational terms. And so in my tradition, in my culture, especially when facing a crisis, we recognize that there will be key roles played by specific individuals, but ultimately the celebration or the success is shared by the whole community and not only those individuals who were at the forefront. And equally, the failure is not simply the responsibility of those who are leading, uh, but it is the responsibility of, of all. And I suspect there's something of that at the core of, of our Christian identity, which uh, weaves us together in, in neutrality and belonging. So therefore, taking away some anxiety about uh, individual and personal performance, uh, but encouraging us to support and help each other to develop and discover uh, a shared sense of, of belonging. Uh, and lastly, there, there's a concept uh, 
that I often find helpful, especially when uh, dealing with, uh, with crisis such as this one, is that of equanimity, uh, which is an invitation in some ways in, in embracing uh, the discomforts and embracing the, the challenge and the difficulty, not try to explain it away uh, and not try to hold on to, uh, to old uh, answers and responses, but simply an invitation to, to dwell in the tension, to dwell in the, in the challenge. And perhaps there is something of that, especially for those of us who, who find ourselves with, uh, no, with, with a, a deep sense of powerlessness and no real sense uh, of, of direction uh, and, and clarity as to what we can do to make things different. I find that hugely helpful, uh, Lucy. I'm going to reflect on that a lot more myself. Both that that idea of equanimity and uh, and focusing on the being and the the relationship, the community side of this. I think lots of people are finding that uh, this has brought a renewed focus, actually, on community and on relationships. So. My thanks to you, Lucio, for uh, joining me in this conversation today. And my thanks once again to everybody watching this. Uh, I hope you will go on talking about these sorts of issues and exploring them within local churches, fresh expressions of church, even among family and friends as well. My thanks for all that you're doing in caring for one another.